What's up, everyone? If you haven't yet, take your lore to the next level by clicking that subscribe and bell notification. Today we'll be looking at some soft cannon from Star Trek Online. Stay tuned till the end for some updates on current in-game fleet operations for the lore. Let's just get into it. When the Dominion War ended in 2375, the Alpha Quadrant thought it had saw the worst that the galaxy could offer. Little did they know that just in 29 years, they would be proven wrong. The 25th century, 2405 in particular, would see a renewed and gruesome war with the Klingons. Additionally, the Borg would begin an all-out invasion of the Alpha Quadrant. The Federation would find itself beleaguered with confrontation on all sides. The threats would be so great that Starfleet would bring every ship available out of mothballs, refit that ship with 25th century tech, and crew them with cadets and send them out to try and at least stop the invasion forces that threaten the Federation borders. This means that during the battles you would see Constitution class ships, Miranda class ships, and Excelsiors fighting alongside Akira, Sovereign, and Defiant class ships. You would even see Oberth class ships. <sighs> Some things never change. It would be hard to see, but the Federation would be making gains in their war with the Klingons. Every step forward would come at a cost of hundreds to thousands of lost Starfleet lives, but they would be gains nonetheless. On the front lines of this battle was the crew of the USS Lore, NCC N4875-B. An Akira-class ship, the crew of the Lore had been there at the very start, when the Borg first invaded, and had fought dutifully together throughout the Klingon War. Due to the effectiveness of the crew and their captain, Jaloran Chambre, the crew had been able to stay together when reassigned to different ships. Ultimately, they would find themselves on the USS Lore, fighting in the Klingon Federation War at horrific odds. After intense clashes with the Klingons and even identifying an undying conspiracy to keep the war moving forward to weaken both powers, the USS Lore would be ordered back to space dock for refit and some R&R. There would be more to do, of course, but the ship was in bad need of its weapons and defensive systems being updated, and the crew was exhausted. They would not find the rest they needed, however, when Temporal Agent Daniels would reach out to Captain Chambre. Daniels had discovered that terrorists were once again attempting to change the timeline, and these terrorists had found a way to not be detected in the time stream. Finally being able to track the terrorists down to the 23rd century would request that the captain and crew of the USS Lore make for the Gallandin core system, so that they could be transported back in time to stop the terrorists from giving the Romulans of that time a weapon of mass destruction. Thank you for coming. My name is Daniels. In case you're wondering, this is a temporal observatory. From here, I can monitor the time stream against any incursions. We've become aware of several temporal incidents led by rogue Nakul agents. They've been using a new form of time travel that we can't detect. We were unaware of their activities until we started noticing changes in the time stream. The latest of these changes happened in the 23rd century at the Galorndon core system. We believe the Nakul are involved, along with a planet killer, a doomsday machine. If that's the case, we need to stop them. At all costs. I know I can count on you to go back in time with me and preserve the timeline. The USS Lore would launch from space dock without its refit and make at maximum warp for the core system. Once arriving, Daniels would use temporal technology to transport the ship back to the 23rd century. The USS Lore would be outfitted with advanced 29th century holographic technology that would make it appear, both by appearance and scan, to be a T-less light warbird. The crew of the USS Lore would hack into a 23rd century Romulan satellite and transmit their credentials so that anyone who scanned the ship would identify it in the records as a Tal Shiar vessel. Upon approaching the planet, the crew would discover a doomsday machine protected by several Nakul ships. The Nakul ships, being a part of the terrorist organization, would prevent the USS Lore from scanning or getting close to the Doomsday Machine. So the captain and the bridge crew of the USS Lore would beam down to the planet, instead of specialists who were trained for this type of espionage, because, you know, Star Trek. The crew would be provided with holographic technology that would allow them to also look and pose as Romulan Tal Shiar officers. The crew of the Lore would use their credentials to identify just how the Naku were able to manipulate the Doomsday Machine, and also what their plans were for it. Using their fake credentials to gain access to the primary meeting, it would be discovered that the Romulans would use the Doomsday Machine to bring the Federation and Klingons to their knees. During this meeting, the Naku envoy would expose the crew of the USS Lore 
and then order the 23rd century Romulan security forces to rush them. As the leadership of the Romulan Star Empire and the Nakul would beam to their ship to use the Doomsday against the USS Lore and then the 23rd century Federation and Klingon Empire. Your attention, please. Let's begin, shall we? We thank Specialist Krog of Nakul for joining us. We have concerns about the dangers involved with this weapon. You have nothing to fear from the machine, my friend. Would you be so confident if you were here, Envoy? Utterly so, Commander. Soon, the Doomsday Machine will bring our foes to their knees. Bold words, Envoy. We shall see, won't we? It would seem a demonstration is in order. See to it, Krog. As you wish. Shall we? Commander? Very well. Show me what this beast of yours can do. It will be my pleasure. Enjoy the show, interloper. They are using holographic disguises, guards. Deal with them. Causing what can only be described as a probable tidal wave of changes to the timeline for the Romulan Star Empire, which I can only imagine is why we got Star Trek Nemesis the movie, the crew of the USS Lore would engage in battle throughout the Romulan complex against Romulan security forces. Surprisingly, 23rd century Romulan technology would be found to be able to breach 25th century advanced shielding technology the crew was wearing. Though, no one would ever question this. Ultimately, the crew of the USS Lore would be able to defeat the Romulan security forces and would face off against the Nicole ground security forces that had beamed down. The Nikul would be defeated as well, and the crew would confiscate the control system of the Doomsday Machine and transport it to Daniels. The captain and the bridge crew would beam back to the USS Lore. Once on board, the USS Lore would drop its holographic system and raise shields. Temporal Agent Daniels, even though being an agent who can traverse all of time, like he can do something and then make it appear at any time, would request five minutes to be able to access the control system to gain control of the Doomsday Machine. Captain Trombray would give him two minutes, and then engage the combined romulan Nikul fleet while trying to avoid the Doomsday Machine. Interestingly enough, the Romulan fleet, 23rd century tech and soldiers, would not be amazed to see an Akira-class ship with advanced, outfitted 25th century technology. Also curiously enough, 23rd century technology would not only be able to withstand the onslaught of a 25th century vessel, but cause enough damage to breach the shields of the Akira-class ship. Moving on. The USS Lore was heavily outmatched and constantly having to avoid the beam of the Doomsday Machine. It was a defensive game of bouncing between ships and ensuring that the shielding could regenerate. At the two minute mark exactly, Daniels was able to hack into the system and gain control of the Doomsday device. Or at least so he thought. His attempts would result in the Doomsday ship firing indiscriminately, destroying three Romulan Telus class warbirds. And just ultimately screwing up the timeline. I mean, a Telus class warbird had at least, what, 15 officers on it? If half of those had a spouse and one kid, then that would at least be seven times two times three, which would be at least 42 people impacted that would grow and continue to pass this travesty on ad infinitum, which would just have drastic impacts upon all of the timeline. You know, I'm not completely convinced the USS Lore aren't also the bad guys in this way. In any circumstance, the Doomsday Machine would begin firing on ships indiscriminately as we had just discussed. The Romulans would see the dangers of the machine and ally with the USS Lore to fight off the Nakul. The combined Romulan fleet and the Akira-class ship would overwhelm the Nakul and force it to crash into the Doomsday Machine, destroying them both. The Romulan fleet would allow the USS Lore to leave without destroying it. Cause... You know, a 25th century crew and an Akira-class ship that had faced off against 25th century Klingons, Undyne, and Borg are really concerned about a 23rd century fleet of heavily damaged to list warbirds stopping them. Upon returning to the 25th century, Daniels would congratulate Captain Chambre and tell him that their job wasn't over. During the meeting, Daniels would step back in pain and his face would be covered in grievous scars. He would say that everything is fine, that this was just a hazard of the job. Daniels would transport the captain back to his ship but ultimately, Captain Chambray knew this wouldn't be the end of the story. He suspected that perhaps this would be a line of scenarios that would have to continue. A story line, if you will. But for now, the Nakul had been defeated and the timeline preserved. 
except for all the people that were killed on both ground and the ships. Somehow I feel that probably caused a dent in the timeline itself. Hey guys, if you're a part of the lore fleet, or if you want to be, then I have an actual mailing list and can be contacted at sto at lorereloaded.com. Check out the description for more information. I know there has been some issues here and there with getting people in. I'm still trying to balance YouTube with getting this fleet started. I will be starting weekly events, at least two of them a week, where I am solely focused on building up the fleet and nothing to do with YouTube. So just have patience with me, guys. Shoot me an email and join the mailing list. We'll also have a Discord located in the description. I really am so glad you guys decided to stay and watch this entire episode. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And guys, I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.